Welcome to this look at a new map on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Silly P. New Lands by Gwendal. 147.94 megabytes to download. We've had some very strange, some very similar maps working off of a similar idea but very different recently. You'll see what I mean as I go around. This is the map. I'm a new farmer, normal economy. What do we start with? Well, you start with all these bits in between, and you do start with this field down here, field one, and this little plot. This stuff all around the outside, if I click on that, costs zero. So I don't know how it's going to be for placeables, but it is there. You start with it on new farmer anyway. Um, but this is the bit you kind of get in addition to. There's no sleep trigger um, off the start. It does say the map is seasons ready. So there's no sleep trigger, which means you can place your sleep trigger wherever you want. And there's nothing really kind of obvious. There are no animal pens on here to start off with either. And if you look as well, there are no fields, really, apart from field one. So this is, again, like it's a pioneer map, but not a... <laughs> Not forestry in the usual sense of a forestry map. The fields are very open. A, vi a bit like when Jim's done some of his. Actually, we'll go back onto here. Field prices aren't too bad. And they take in various different size plots, as you kind of find on a lot of maps. But yeah, not, not too bad. And the prices do get more expensive. The bigger the plot is, which is kind of how it works, really. We start here up at the shop, which is a long way from where the rest of our machinery is. So, this is the store, there's your uh, cell, customised repair point, the buy point is just up the steps there, gates, just here, but what I'm going to do, um, like I say, I'm on New Farmer, so I've got 100,000, I'm going to lease a pickup to get us around, well, to get us around the map, because otherwise I'll jump over and then have to sort of come back up around here anyway, because a lot of the cell points are up around this area. The lighting's good, um, the texture palette's nice, it's, you know, it has a nice feel to it. But if we just kind of have a look out here, across, you can see that the trees are fairly sparse, I guess, but they still need to be cleared. You have to clear the land to make your own fields, and because of that, there are no contracts available per se, but there are some transport jobs that pop up. I think we might have one at the moment. Now, you might come on here and it might say you haven't got any. So we've got one transporting job at the moment, but it does mean that when you make your own fields, contracts won't appear. Um, this is this is something that there will be trans transport jobs, but nothing more than that. Now, um, slot count? Yeah, we'll talk about slot count now. Oh, yeah, there are no custom crops. There are no custom mods. It's all standard in-game stuff as it stands. The slot count is 467 out of 1,299. That is the same on New Farmer, Farm Manager, or Start From Scratch. We can get that slot count down to 376 if you sell all your start machinery. We'll get onto the start machinery later on when we actually get to it. Just bear with me a second while I get myself a pickup. Excellent. So, from here, let's hop in. And we'll go around the town. There's some, there's some big old roadways as well. And again, that's what I mean about recently. It's, it's strange how you can go a long time. You might go a week or two and not have a new map at all. And then you seem to have a load of maps all appear at the same time. But often, the maps are vastly different. What I've found, like I said, quite interesting is the fact that they seem to be very similar. It, you know, we had... Um, what was it? Fazen... The Bakuri one. And then there's a second one that I haven't actually reviewed yet. But had those big road junctions. And um, American Life Farming had one on the sort of interstate, the main road. Uh, where are we? Around the back here. This is the village sawmill. We've got a small sawmill sell point here. Just the village sawmill, which we can sell at. Um, and then this one has got them as well and we haven't had a map for a while that has so it's interesting that all of a sudden we've got these maps popping up with these big sort of intersections right, swing down here down this side turning we come to the spinnery now there are two spinneries on the map and there's the village sawmill and the normal sawmill this is i say the top one i suppose it is it's the top of the map 
if we go across to the cell points there, this spinnery is this one just here. If I tag it, where's the tag gone? Oh, maybe it's the other way around. Untag. Oh, that's interesting. I, I got it right, the wrong way around on my piece of paper. Um, this is the bottom spinnery sell point. So according to the list of sell points, the, the prices you're looking for, this one, the bottom one, the other one is further down the map. So spinnery sell point is just here. I think it's actually round here in front. That's our spinnery. There's the biogas plant. We'll get to in a little while. Last couple of maps I've looked at haven't had them. So it's nice to have that on there. Makes a bit of a change. What if I miss anything? Don't think so. Right, livestock market is next. And then I think we might... Are we going to cut cross country? No, I'm going to drive back on the main road, I think. So through here, we have got up on the ramp. Our livestock market. There's trigger there and trigger there. Both do the same thing. One's on the ramp, one's not. And weirdly, we've got this little kind of... I suppose they're supposed to be pens, aren't they? But there's nothing in them, but a couple of little pens here to the side. I don't think you can put anything in them, but they are there. And then from here, we will go... You know, I haven't checked. I haven't checked the reset. I have to do that at some point before I finish. And you know what that means? It means I'll completely forget by the end of this <laughs> map tour. It happens a lot. So we come to this junction, I think we want this one, pretty sure we do. Now obviously there's a lot of scope then, with a slot camera at 467 it's not horrendous, I mean you can still do a lot of gameplay at 467, of course you can, and there's a lot of open space for you to create wherever you want, but then obviously depending on how you want to go about it, there are various different mulches and things like that. So you can take the trees out if you don't want to do the logging. There's also that devourer. So if you want to do the lot, if you want to take the trees out, but you want to get the wood chips, you can do that. So you can clear the land and then plough the fields out and make it however you want. So it's, it has got that kind of pioneering feel without dense forest, you know. Barn cell point just here. So we'll go back to the map. We have gone from the shop. Village sawmill, spinnery, animal dealer, back down the road. We've come up this side, turning here to the barn. We're going to go up here to dairy station uh to the grain elevator east and dairy station then we're going to go across to the biogas plant and then we're going to head out into the open world it's a nicely laid out map i'll, I'll be totally honest it's, it's um i do like the layout and i do like the big roadways with the junctions and yeah it's just it's just got a nice feel to it whoa I suppose it's a, it's one of those any map like this. I know people. You're either forestry is a marmite occupation <laughs> in game. Most people either love it or hate it. I suppose there are some people in between that do a little bit, but they're not that fast. But it does seem to really divide people. And I think having these different bits of machinery available makes life a little bit easier. Grain elevator east, just here. And then the dairy station is around the back just here and I kind of understand some people don't they don't want to do that pioneering thing I, I totally get that they might not want to come on and just do a forestry let's play if you're not really into your forestry this should have a bit of a balance I mean when you look at the, the you could take out four or five trees and get yourself a fair size field an average size field and there'll be plots around the map where you probably take out four or five trees and you could make a very, very big field um, I've taken a long turn in here I think I have sorry let's cut through the bushes find the other track where's the other track we're going to cut over the top actually I wonder if we can drive straight through I know we probably shouldn't do there is a track that runs up and over no oh, no we'll do it we'll do it come on let's do this does get a bit bumpy. I'm not quite sure the purpose, what, why this track is here. There's, there's not a cell point up here or anything like this. I think it's just to add a little bit of something, somewhere to go, somewhere to have a look. I 
I suppose with the various different sleep triggers now, especially the pillow and stuff. You can come out and do some do some overnight camping. Do some forestry. Oh, I've lost the track. Where's it gone? There we go. There we go, then down to the biogas plant on the other side. So the bios, biogas plant will need to be purchased if you want to use it. That will set you back 69,984. It's not a bad price on this one. The silage and manure both sell for 720. An average price for silage is 360. I did have a look to see if it would do potatoes and sugar beet and that kind of thing. It doesn't, but like I say, getting 720 for manure and silage makes it a pretty good prospect. Two silage clamps, the cell point just over there, and our digestate pipe just here. We'll look on the map. So from the grain elevator east and dairy station, we came across here, up over the top, down to there. Biogas plant, there is a fuel point here as well. Like I say, click on that, 69,984. And it gives you a fairly, fairly standard, but slightly inflated price. Um, for, that was terrible. There's the fuel point, that's what I was doing. I was trying to show you the fuel point. So from here, we're gonna head south-ish, I think. I'm just looking down my list at cell points. Uh, okay, right. <laughs> And it does feel very big as well. Right, where am I heading to? Do I want this junction? I think it's this one I want. Yep. Let's put my foot down. Stamp down on the whoosh pedal and off we go. Right. I think when you have roads like this with the big junctions and intersections and that kind of thing it's another way that a map feels very big because you kind of get that feeling even if it's just kind of mentally you've come away from the countryside onto the, the sort of bigger main roads to do transport and hauling off to wherever you're going to it kind of tricks your brain into thinking that you've traveled a long way i don't know is that, is that how it feels to me anyway right off here a bit of a loop round I'll make sure I take the correct turning up here, otherwise I'm going to go completely wrong. So we need to go round the roundabout and second exit, I think I need. Pretty sure it is. Yep. <laughs> this should all work if I've remembered the map correctly. One thing I've always found, I've always been pretty good at map reading. I've always had a pretty good idea, weirdly, out in the world where I am, a good sense of direction. And when I do my map tours, you have to kind of whiz around the map, check out the cell points and where things are. And I'm normally pretty good at remembering the routes I take and that kind of thing. Not always, but most of the time. So, we are now coming up on the main sawmill. Off the main roads, side roads, now onto the more beaten tracks, I guess. Sawmill cell point is just there. That's interesting. Oh, that's wood chips, isn't it? I'm thinking there's a proper cell point there. That'll be the wood chips, won't it? Just there. So. Back to the map from the biogas plant. Down here, we took that little side turn in and came all the way down here. Let's zoom out. Down there, around the bottom. Second exit, up to here to the sawmill. We're now going to come from there back down. Going to come across here to the next two cell points, central grain elevator and the second spinnery. Then our field one, the one field that's just stuck out there, and our equipment, if we zoom in, which is down in here. Like I said, there's no, there's no sleep trigger, there's no farm building, it's, it's you know, basically a shed and, and your equipment is there. I've got to make sure I take the correct turn in here as well. Now, I'm not sure if these, because I sped up time to get the light, you know, up a little bit, so I've gone past nine o'clock, but a lot of these cell points all have gates, so potentially they could close at night. I'm not sure if they do, and if they do, I'm not sure if they lock. Usually it's about 9am, 
a lot of them open on most maps anyway and sometimes their signpost is 8 a.m but don't open till 9 it's it's been a, a weird thing that happens quite a lot on maps but as you can see look how much more open it is here and the same thing i could take out maybe four or five trees and i've got myself a fairly large area so it's not going to be a horrendous task to create fields here if you want flat areas of doing placeables and stuff like that it's another one of those ones that gives you a lot of choice for what you want the map to be and the thing that i've always said right from the start when fs19 launched and we had landscaping was the thing that i think is amazing is you can have the same map 50 people play on it and the map's going to look so different for each person because of what they'll do to it the little bits of landscaping the tweaks the changes the placeables that's brilliant you know I, that's such a fantastic concept when you think about it when you go back to fs 15 and 17 you know you had your map you went on you played it there wasn't a lot of scope really to do much more than that so central grain elevator is from this cell point just here second spinnery cell point is marked i think oh yeah just here on the dock there you can see the marked area just there i will double check that because that was the first one let's tag that there we go just there if we grab the pickup we'll go skirt around the edge of the field you do kind of come into it from the other side but it's easier if i cut across here be a little bit quicker just a little bit Let's spin around at the edge of the field. I, mean, I can go straight across and no crops in it, to be fair. So this is your, your start farm. I mean, it's a yard, really. Field one. And this. This is your equipment. So like I say, 467 out of 1,299 slots. We have a few bits. Nothing, nothing major, nothing huge. Not a huge amount of gear. It's going to be a real kind of, pretty much a start from scratch pioneering kind of thing. So if we go on to here and go to garage, we start with the Voucher N174, the Russell Mash 330, FarmTech TDK1600, header for the Russell Mash, plow, cedar, stump grinder, some front loader gear, and a weight. Like I say, no buildings or anything, there's nothing in here with regard to mods or placeables or anything that the map makers added in. No extra silos, that's the other thing as well, you don't start with a silo. No sheds, nothing like that. But you can place whatever you want, where you want. I mean, from here, this is all fairly flat. Cut down a couple of, I mean, you don't have to cut down a couple of trees here. Do a bit of landscaping. Put down a house or whatever you want to do. Some more sheds, building, silo. It'll work. It'll work pretty well. And if you want to do loads of grass work, you're going to have no shortage of that to start off with. If you don't want to plough fields out to start off with. Make a load of money doing silage. At 720 for a thousand not a bad price i would say from here then we're going to head out towards the east there's only one more cell point i think it's one more cell point pretty sure it is we're going to head out to the grain mill if i remember correctly so we are now so i said we come all the way down there down here we zoom back out again this side of the map is all pretty much open the next cell point is up here You've got these Big main roads with the kind of crossroads there. A few little tracks cutting in and out. The slightly higher ground here in the middle. middle. It's, it's a different one. And again, it, it, like I say, I like it. I, li I like the idea. It is a pioneering map. It is a map you've got to clear to start. But it's not so heavily forested that it'll be a chore. But then yesterday I did the walled sea one which was heavily forested, but had been done in such a way that if you didn't want to do forestry, you could just clear big chunks by cutting down a post. You know, it's it's amazing how these things have been tackled in different ways. Yeah, looking out to the side there. Very little tree removal to get yourself some big open plots. And so, heading north-ish. great thing being there's not loads of fences there's not loads of hedges there's nothing in the way you could use pretty big machinery if you want to go as large as you want on here we come to the grain mill which is this one just there and that is all the cell points from here we can go back around and join the main road highway 
It's a dual carriageway, we would call it in the UK. Two lanes each way. Back down to the dual carriageway, and we can head back round to pretty much where we started. There are some areas, obviously, you know, if you're going, if you want to do forestry, where the um, the trees are a little bit denser, a little bit closer together, so you can do your kind of more standard forestry, if you want to call it that. Let's get round onto here. And that's the map. That's New Lands by Gwendal. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.